Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the trapezium rule. So I'm going to show you how to derive it and kind of what it means, what it's doing, just to give you some intuition about why it's important. So the trapezium rule applies to functions and approximating the area under the curve. So we know uh, the area exactly is given by the integral of this function f of x between a and b. But sometimes in practice, you get a function that's really horrible and you just can't integrate or you just don't know what it is. So how are we going to find the area under this curve? Well, we can approximate it at least. And the way we do that is we just split this region into lots of trapezia. So I'm just going to draw some vertical lines. I'm just going to partition this into some regions. These are really bad lines. <laughs> but let's say we take n strips, n strips or n trapezia. And let's say they have width. This distance here is h. So then the width is given by the length of the total interval, which is b minus a, divided by the number of strips we have. So b minus a divided by n. And these are all uniform, so they all have the length h. And so now what we do is we look at the function evaluated at these points. So if I call this y0, this one y1, this would be y2, etc. We look at the function evaluated at just these interval points. And then think about joining up a straight line between these points. And then this will create lots of trapezias. Or trapeziums, I'm not sure what the plural is. <laughs> um, but we see we have lots of trapezia. And so an approximation of the area here is just by finding the area of each trapezium and adding, adding these up. So first, let's think about a general trapezium, um, which is, is kind of like a rectangle, but one of its sides is kind of um, leaning. So if I call this uh, length y0 and this one y1, this would be kind of looking at the first one. And we said we're looking at um, trapeziums with a width of h. So then there's a formula for the area of this. And the area would just be given by the sum of these two values, y0 plus y1. And we divide this by 2. So it would be kind of like taking the average of the height. So kind of imagine drawing a line like this. And then we multiply it by the width times h. So this is the area of just one trapezium. And then we can just add up all these areas together to get an approximation. So then the integral between a and b of f of x dx, or the area under this curve, this is approximately all these areas. So what's it going to be? It's going to be half times h plus the sum of the function evaluated at these two points. So that's the first trapezium. The second one's going to be the same except we have y1 plus y2, because we're looking at here, y1, and this is y2. And then just imagine carrying on for all these um, intervals. Again, this last one would be a half times h times yn minus 1 plus yn, if yn is the last one. And then we can do some simplifying. We can actually factor out uh, a half times a h, because they all have that factor. Half times a h, I'm going to put big brackets here. Then what are we left with in the middle? We have y0 plus y1, then this is y1 plus y2, and this is going to carry on throughout all the middle terms, and then end up with y minus 1 plus yn. And so what we notice now is that we actually have all the middle terms, they appear exactly twice. We have y1 and y1, so two factors of y1, and we're going to have two factors of y2 because it appears in uh, two trapeziums. It appears as the right point on this one and the left point on that one. So all the middle terms appear twice, but the endpoints, y0 and yn, they only appear once because they're only part of one trapezium. So we can actually write this as a half times h times y0 plus 2 times all the middle terms. So y1, uh, y2, dot, 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 up to yn minus 1, and then add on the last term, yn. And this is it. This is the trapezium rule. So if you're given some function, and you can't integrate it straight away, we can approximate its integral by just um, dividing it up into a few strips or lots of strips and evaluate this function at these points and then just plug it into this formula. So let's just think about evaluating this on a computer because if you think about, if we only took like two or three or four strips, then we'd actually be missing a lot of the area between the function and the trapeziums at the top. It'd be a bad approximation essentially. Um, so what we can do is we can increase the accuracy of this approximation by increasing the strips. If we make n really large, these are going to be really, really thin strips, and the areas are going to be a very good approximation. However, then, we need to evaluate this function at a lot more points. 
So there's a trade-off here between accuracy and how long it would take a computer to implement. If this is a really nasty function, then it might not be that easy to evaluate this function. So it's a really nice idea that appears all the time. It's actually kind of a branch of mathematics that's called numerical analysis. And you could look into that more if you find this interesting. But this video is kind of just to give you kind of some intuition about why this is useful and how to derive it.